step back into 1930s America with Paper Moon, a classic film that weaves a tale of unlikely companionship against the backdrop of the Great Depression. Directed by Peter Bogdanovich, this black and white gem follows the escapades of a con artist and a young girl who may or may not be his daughter, traversing through small town landscapes with a mix of humor and heart. The movie's charm lies in its clever dialogues and the delightful chemistry between its leads, Ryan Wunnell, and his real-life daughter, Totem Wunnell. Have you ever found yourself reminiscing about a particular scene from a movie that just sticks? Or perhaps there's a moment in Paper Moon that resonates with you long after the credits roll? Share your reflections with us. We would love to hear the stories and memories this movie has sparked for you in the comments below. So, what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this iconic film? Share it with us and let's keep the conversation going. Peter Bogdanovich, the director of the 1973 film, undertook a meticulous effort to capture a pivotal scene. The intense one-take sequence featuring Addie and Moe's arguing in the car about running out of Bibles required two days and 39 takes to achieve perfection. Shot on a one-mile stretch of road just before a modern town section, any line flub necessitated a complete turnaround, adding complexity to the filming process. The attire of the main character, portrayed by Ryan Wunnell, carries its own interesting history. Production designer Polly Platt scoured Paramount's costumes to find the distinctive seersucker suit. What made it unique was the discovery of a piece of tape inside, indicating that it had been worn by George Raft in a previous film, though the specific movie remained undisclosed. Adding a touch of cinematic expertise, Orson Welles, a close friend of Bogdanovich, played an uncredited role in consulting on the cinematography. Welles' suggestion to shoot black and white photography through a red filter brought a heightened contrast to the images, showcasing his influence on the film's visual aesthetics. These behind-the-scenes details offer a glimpse into the meticulous work and collaborative efforts that shaped Paper Moon, bringing out the intricacies of its production and the notable contributions of key figures like Bogdanovich, Platt, and Wells. Each aspect, from the arduous filming process to the historical significance of the protagonist's attire and the cinematic expertise of a legendary figure, adds depth to the understanding of this classic film. Titled Addie Prey in its initial conception, the 1973 film almost starred Paul Newman and his daughter Nell Potts, directed by John Huston. Interestingly, it was envisioned as a color movie, deviating from the eventual black and white aesthetic. The film's journey from its original concept to the screen reflects a fascinating behind-the-scenes narrative. In the finished product, a peculiar nod to the movie's title occurs in the carnival scene. Madeline Kahn, a key player in the cast, can be heard singing the classic Paper Moon song from an old gramophone. This subtle inclusion adds a nostalgic layer to the narrative, linking the film's theme to a timeless melody. Amidst the on-screen drama, a unique reference to a Coney Island delicacy emerges. Moe's, one of the characters, mentions it a version of the hot dog popularized by Nathan Handwerker in Brooklyn's Coney Island. The term Coney Island not only refers to the food, but also to the eateries creating variations, adding a touch of regional flavor to the storyline. These tidbits unveil the intricate decisions and adaptations that shaped the 1973 film. From its early days as Addie Prey with a different cast and director to the incorporation of a classic tune and a subtle nod to a regional delicacy, each element contributes to the unique tapestry of Paper Moon. Madeline Kahn's discontent over Tottenham Wunnell's Best Supporting Actress nomination for Paper Moon stirred controversy during the film's award season. Kahn asserted that Wunnell deserved the Best Actress title, sparking debate over the recognition of non-adult actors in leading categories. The disagreement reflected shifting norms as later instances like Quivenjane Wally's in 2012 challenged previous age-related award restrictions. This behind-the-scenes conflict added a layer of tension to the film's success. Wunnell's Best Supporting Actress win, coupled with Khan's objection, highlighted the intricacies of acknowledgement in the industry. Before finalizing casting, Peter Bogdanovich met Ryan Wunnell and Tatum Wunnell at their Malibu home. During the meeting, Ryan invited Bogdanovich to start an exercise regimen of running on the beach, but Tatum countered, stating he wasn't the type. Her boldness in expressing this caught Bogdanovich's attention, leading him to conclude, she'll do. This incident marked the beginning of their involvement in the movie. 
The directness of Tatum's remarks showcased her assertiveness and likely played a part in securing her role in the film. It was a pivotal moment that set the stage for the dynamic between director and actor, shaping the eventual success of the production. The actress playing Imogen was a 15-year-old Houston schoolgirl named P.J. Johnson. Before becoming something of a local movie celebrity in Houston following the film's release, Johnson had gone to Dallas and auditioned for Peter Bogdanovich. The director told her she got the part because she said he was handsome. P.J. Johnson, a Houston schoolgirl at the time, landed a role in the film after a candid moment during her audition with director Peter Bogdanovich. Despite her young age and relatively unknown status, Johnson made an impression with a simple compliment to the director's appearance, earning her a part in the movie. This marked a turning point in her life, propelling her to a level of local fame in Houston post-movie release. Ryan Wunnell, in a 1973 article, shared the profound connection between him and his daughter, Tatum, in the movie. He insisted that their relationship echoed the intensity portrayed on screen. Despite concerns about Tatum smoking lettuce cigarettes for scenes, Ryan assured that she wouldn't develop an addiction. These insights underscore the personal depth they brought to the film's narrative, mirroring their own lives. Such behind-the-scenes revelations shed light on the intricate bonds, shaping the on-screen chemistry, offering a glimpse into the film's deeper emotional layers. Tatum Wunnell, at just 10 years old, achieved an unprecedented feat in cinema history by winning the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. Her portrayal in the movie not only earned critical acclaim, but also made her the youngest recipient of an Oscar in a competitive category, a record she still holds today. Her remarkable performance surpassed even Linda Blair's notable role in The Exorcist, securing her place in cinematic history. This triumph catapulted the movie into the limelight, showcasing the remarkable talent displayed on screen and solidifying its place in the annals of film history. The poignant, touching story between two con artists was a departure from the typical focus on the intricacies of cons, a factor that drew praise from renowned critic Roger Ebert. His four-star review lauded the film's ability to delve into the characters' shared experiences, creating a blend of humor, poignancy, and depth that resonated with audiences. However, despite the movie's success, the attempt to translate its charm into a television series starring Jodie Foster failed to capture the same essence, ending in an unsuccessful venture. Nevertheless, Tatum Wunnell's historic win remains a testament to the film's enduring impact on cinema and its portrayal of a unique and touching narrative. As we draw the curtains on our cinematic journey, I urge you to let the sepia-toned memories of Paper Moon linger in your mind. Allow the magic of this 1973 gem to resonate within you like a cherished melody that refuses to fade with time. This film, with its timeless charm and endearing characters, often acts as a mirror reflecting our own narratives of resilience, companionship, and unexpected adventures. Perhaps you found a piece of yourself in Addie Prey's spirited tenacity or Moses Prey's unlikely paternal instincts. Or maybe it was the sepulchral landscapes of the Depression-era Midwest that struck a chord resonating with your own recollections or imaginings. As we bid adieu, take a moment to ruminate on your personal odyssey with this cinematic marvel. Whether it's a poignant scene that lingered in your heart or a line of dialogue that whispered familiarity, your thoughts and memories of Paper Moon are an invaluable mosaic unique to you. Feel free to share your musings, for in doing so, you contribute to the kaleidoscope of experiences woven around this cinematic treasure. Your words add depth to the shared appreciation for this cinematic masterpiece. Thank you for allowing Paper Moon to color your world, if only for a fleeting moment. Your presence and engagement enrich the tapestry of this conversation. Until our next cinematic rendezvous, keep the spirit of storytelling alive.